Okay, I'm going to call the meeting to order and I'll start with a roll call. Mike, muted, present. Bill? Here. Carol? Present. Paul? Here. Jennifer? Here. David? Nicole? Here. And Kurt? Here. Uh, okay, I do not have Patricia unless she's hiding amongst the other boxes. Patricia, if you're there, speak up. Okay, I do not have Patricia, but I do believe we have a quorum. Is that correct, Ashley? Yes, that is correct. Okay. Then if we have... Uh, if we're called to order and we have a quorum, let's move on to an adoption of the agenda. You should all have the agenda in front of you. It's pretty straightforward. Um, just for grins, I'll go down the list. Um, the first thing that will happen after the adoption of the agenda will be an announcement and uh, an update on the transfer fee. Then uh, there'll be a review of the frequently asked questions. And then um, members open forum, 90 minutes of comments and questions. Uh, that'll be followed by continuing business, which will involve the untabling of the resolution for the transfer fee and a modification as has been discussed over the week to a $250 fee. And then a vote on the amended resolution. And that's all that we have on the agenda for today. So let us move to an adoption of the agenda. Do I have a motion for adoption? I move Thank to you. adopt the agenda. Okay, David and second. Carol and Bill and everybody. We have a motion and a second. Um, any, anybody having a question or anything about the agenda or I'll call the, I'll call the question. Uh, is the agenda approved? All those in favor say aye. 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 I see enough faces and names. Aye. Uh, how about nays? Anybody? I don't see. Kurt, was that a aye or? <laughs> no, I'm in favor. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, the agenda is passed. The adoption agenda is passed. And moving on to announcements, I want to start with a few words because it's been a busy week. Um, I've spoken with several people directly over the week. Uh, I've also had several messages passed on to me by other board members or uh, people who were encouraged to call me. Uh, encouragement, including my phone number, I suppose. Um, first, I'd like to say that we have listened very hard. Um, we've heard the comments from the community. Um, we appreciate the comments from the community. Second, I'd like to say that the budget as proposed is already on the ballot and we are in the process of voting. So as to the budget, the budget is what we will have to vote on. You'll have to vote uh, on the budget the way it is. Uh, but uh, I'll make another comment on that in a moment. Um, my third comment is that the contracts we signed are legally and duly signed with the authorization uh, of the board. Uh, I believe the vote was nine to one no vote, uh, one non-vote. And I believe that honoring contracts is important, not only for our reputation. Um, I guarantee we'll do a better job of communicating in the future. Uh, my fourth comment is that the board is committed to a review of both the expense side of the budget and the revenue side of the budget after the election, immediately after the election. Uh, we'll do a full spending review and we'll have a revenue source discussion. That will include member participation. 
It is our intent to deliver a sound and hopefully balanced budget as soon as practicable after the election. We will explore possible reductions in expenses, but not at the sacrifice of what we believe needs to be accomplished. We will represent a modified forecast after community discussion to all the members. Fifth, we will strengthen the board as we move into the Excuse me. We will strengthen the board as we move into next year. We have a standard of care and a duty of loyalty. We intend to adhere to both. Sixth, today we'll be passing a transfer fee of $250 and we will not be passing a transfer fee of one half of 1% respondent to the comments and concerns of members. Um, the motion tabled from last week will come off the table for an amendment to the new minimal fee of $250. Seventh, we will continue to improve our communications both out and in. Eighth, we will continue as long as we are in office to do what we believe is in the best interest of the community and what is in uh, the best uh, mode of protection for property values. Ninth, uh, we will do our best to be civil, professional, and respectful to all. And 10th, we will measure progress and insist on performance from board, staff, consultants, and any other outside advisors. Uh, be advised that the consultants must uh, deliver a monthly report to our satisfaction and we will then move on from there. Um, these 10 items are, the, they constitute a, a, a charter from us to you. And that, that charter will be published on the website for all members to read. And we expect you to hold us accountable. I believe you are well practiced at that at this point and will continue. We believe this demonstrates the highest level of transparency that you can ask from a board of directors and we thank you for your support. Uh, with that, um, do we want to move to the, uh, the update on the transfer fee, which is in your packet? Um, as I said, we are going to move to a $250 fee and uh, the board feels that these actions uh, will allow the budget to go into, play, into place and eliminate objections to the legal issues around the transfer fee. We'll save some money on interest if uh, we look at refinancing and we are intent on upgrading staff skills, knowledge and abilities implementing board training and governance succession as we all understand it to be necessary. Okay, that moves us to meeting decorum. And the only comment I have there is that um, this uh, meeting, clarify that for me, please. So I'm just going to read the rules. Okay, well, Ashley will read the rules here. Mm -hmm. It'd be easier than me trying to repeat after her. <laughs> there you go. Good afternoon. I apologize. Um, I will speak slowly and as loud as I can with my mask on. Uh, if I need to slow down, I will. Just let me know. So first, a debate decorum for board members. Your marks must be germane. If your remarks are not, a point of order should and will be used by other directors and sustained appropriately by the president and or facilitator. Refrain from attacking a director's motives. Address all remarks through the chair. Avoid using director's names as much as possible. If a member objects, a director has no right to read from or have the secretary read from any paper or book as part of his or her speech without permission of the assembly. Refrain from disturbing the assembly with whispering, texting, anything like that that could be distracting. As far as the community responsibility, these board meetings are open to the membership. However, members, it is your job to be an attentive and respectful audience. 
You have entrusted and elected these individuals to make responsible decisions on your behalf. You are to observe and listen at open board meetings and you are not granted debate and or discussion rights as you are not an elected member of the board of directors. Please assume they have your best interest in mind. These rules ensure everyone is heard and that the meeting can be conducted in an organized orderly fashion. While we do not have to agree as individuals, please maintain a respectful demeanor. We're all neighbors here. Do you have any? Okay. The next thing on the agenda is um, a discussion of the frequently asked questions. We're pulling those up right now. They're on the website. Most of you have probably seen them already. They were in the board packet as well. We're going to put those up so you can see them. So if you can go to your I will share my screen. Share screen. Um, I will share my screen. But some of the there you go. Okay. Can everyone see that? Anybody cannot see that, please say so. All right, we're going to read through these, and uh, I guess I will do the reading. These are uh, re responses to the frequently asked questions from last Monday's meeting on 10 5. Um, we've collected them into a lower number than we had speakers because many speakers spoke about the same issues. Uh, first, what steps are being taken to ensure all members receive communications in the future? Um, the board has challenged the communications committee to create an effective communication plan for the SRA. The committee will explore many types and methods for communicating, including prompt distribution of board minutes posting board meetings on YouTube, email blasts, SRA, email news, and uh, the signage boards at the gate entrances, which is something new. Greater use of the SRA webpage and a new version of the quarterly newsletter. Um, this plan is a high priority to initiate and to complete. Number two, I need a scroll up. Okay, um, number two, there is a proposed fee of $250 plus $50 an hour for homeowners to review SRI records. Why is that necessary? The executive director has authorized, has the authority, by the, uh, excuse me, the authority to waive the fee if a member makes a simple request and that request is easily and reasonably responded to. Um, just as a side note, we've had requests for as much as 15 years worth of minutes, uh, plus a number of things that have already been posted up. And so we, as a board, put in uh, this fee of $250 an hour uh, because we have to take somebody off to go gather that information. So if anybody wants to drop by, uh, it could be that high, but we doubt it if you have a simple request. Um, I'll, I'll read it as it's written. The board adopted the policy in response to a member submitting voluminous record requests that needed extensive research copying staff supervision during their record review. While members are entitled to see the records and papers of the association, excluding personnel files and privileged legal documentation, some requests could take exhaustive research. In those cases, a fee will be charged. 
Members should expect to see a policy sent to the board after mem member input on this process. Number three, <clears throat> what is the time frame expected for retaining Joint Partners LLC consulting beyond the contract that is currently in place? The Joint Partners contract ends on March 31st, 2021. There are provisions for retaining an accounting manager as a CFO, as well as retaining the interim general manager for staff mentoring and discussion. Uh, that is not anticipated to be a full-time on-site activity. Both of those actions, while in the budgets, are potential costs, but decisions about approving additional contracts will be made by the board as they review the situation in the coming year. Why were we not consider, why are we not considering outside management companies? Um, refer to what on page the, four? It's the last update on page four that's oh. already online. Well, we'll, that's the answer yeah, we, yeah, it's in the frequently asked questions online. Just briefly, it, there was no consensus in the community that we should move to outside management. Um, the vast majority of the people we talk to want to retain control and want to be uh, self-governed body here. Five, why did the board deem it necessary to pay off the mortgage early other than to save money? Well, <clears throat> other than to save money is begging the question, I think, but during the budget development, members of the community spoke up stating that they objected to the association holding debt. Therefore, we put together a plan and uh, that plan included paying off the mortgage. Rather than a special assessment or a dues increase, the board chose a transfer fee payable on the sale of a property. At the October 5th board meeting, a significant number of members stated opposite points of view. During the members open forum, the board heard that message and will not be pursuing an early payoff of the mortgage at this time. Number six, by approving the budget, are we approving the transfer fee? No, you're not. The board approving the budget is separate from the board approving a transfer fee. Number seven, does the board have the authority to impose a transfer fee without a vote of the association? Yes, it does. The board has authority to vote uh, as to a bylaw change to assess fees, which they did last week. That said, instituting a transfer fee would require a resolution voted on by the board as well, uh, which they have tabled for discussion and are prepared to decline in the, its original proposal. Um, I, I would encourage uh, each of you to take a look at the bylaws regarding the powers of the board and the powers of the president and how we are supposed to act. I think we have been consistent with that authority. How did we come up with the numbers for the original transfer fee? The $250 number covers the cost associated, associated with maintaining all the documents required for membership as homes are sold throughout the year. The half percent estimate was based on expected costs for paying off administration, maintenance, building early and achieving goals of the strategic plan. Number nine is updating the upstairs of the SRA center, the allocation, something that can be deferred until next year. Yes, it certainly can. Uh, it should be an action that involves discussion with membership to determine the use of the space, which will drive the scope of what will be constructed. It's currently used mostly for ad hoc meetings and uh, the storage of historical documents. Number 10, why is the SRA proceeding with landscaping the entrance to the main maintenance administration building. We are holding ourselves to the same standard we would hold anybody else to out in the community as to landscaping. Um, 
in point of fact, we are landscaping our property and we are working with the people who own the actual entrance on the street to improve the look down there as well. That was number 10. Mm -hmm. And that was it. That's it. I do want to share this though, if that was okay. All right, up comes another piece for you to view. This is just showing where oh, it's, not. it's not. Hold on. Let me fix that. One second. There you go. You want to speak to that? Sure. This is just showing where you can find all of this information. The FAQs that were just read by Alec are posted on the website. You can find them under the FAQ page. There is a button right on the home page. Um, we can ensure that this is posted if necessary, but these are where all of your important links are as of right now. Recent news, the AGM, the 2021 budget, and the frequently asked questions that are being updated regularly. Thank you. Thank you, Ashley. Um, I will now open the meeting for uh, 90 minutes if we need it. And uh, Ashley, would you please uh, review the SRA open forum rules? Sure. Thank you. So just a first point, the public chat is for the sign up, uh, for sign up only. If you have questions or comments, please sign up. No discussion will take place on the public chat. This just ensures that Lori um, can go through and make sure that we're getting everyone who wants to speak. So uh, the SRA open forum procedure, members will be given a limited number of minutes to speak with a minimum of one and a maximum of three. Um, they will not be interrupted by board members or others in the audience who either agree or disagree with what they're saying. The member speaking is making a presentation, not conducting a discussion or debate. A speaker speaking longer, a longer period of time can ask if someone else who is signed up to speak will yield his or her time to the speaker so they may continue. However, at no time will any member be allowed to use more than six minutes to speak. Uh, I will be keeping a stopwatch and alert the speakers when they have 30 seconds remaining. You will hear a bell. At the end of your presentation, um, if the member is speaking from a written statement, they may submit their written statement to the secretary and or Lori via email to assist with its inclusion into the board's minutes. The written statement must be identical to what was verbally presented to the board. No additional material may be submitted. After a member speaks, board members, um, the presiding officer will thank the member for his or her presentation and will move on to the next speaker. The open forum will be limited to 90 minutes. That is the allotted time. If we finish early, the board may move on to business. Personal attacks on board members or fellow association members are strongly discouraged. Profanity will not be allowed under any circumstances. The goal of this is to improve communication within the association and provide all members with a chance to be heard by the board. Thank you. Thank you, Ashley. Um, I would like to ask you, as you signed up, you will be recognized by Lori, and please identify yourself so the rest of us on the Zoom call can uh, know who's speaking. Thank you very much, Lori. Okay, Peggy Richter and Alan Ogden, go ahead. Can, can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Okay, great. This is Peggy Richter and Alan Ogden. We live at the Marin. Uh, I'll start our statement now. We are dismayed at the substance and tone of the board's response to the letter sent by former board presidents. The current board assumes that they are the saviors of the SRA, rescuing it by expertise only they and their consultant can provide. While any organization can be improved, we don't agree that the sky is falling. We can't believe that an organization which has long operated with experienced and talented people at its helm is in dire need of a total reorganization requiring large consultant fees. This is not a Fortune 500 company. This is a homeowners association with only a few employees. 
Most importantly, however, we are concerned about the lack of disclosure as well as the lack of member input and approval. The SRA board minutes contain no mention of a consultant until its August 4th meeting when it formally engaged Waterman based on its July 29th proposal. Obviously, if Waterman presented a July 